Hey guys, in this video we are going to test and tear down the Tracker Lithium 12 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. If you're new around here, my name is Jeremy. I am an electronics technician and I'm taking these small lithium batteries that we use in our fish finders and ham radios and I'm tearing them down, testing them, seeing what's inside, taking a look at build quality. This is a time lapse of the capacity tester. Each frame of this video is one minute long. With this being a 12 amp hour battery, we are gonna do a 0.2C discharge test. With this battery, that comes out to 2.4 amps. In a previous video, I tested a lithium ion battery, and the voltage range of that battery is a lot lower than these lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the Hummingbird Helix 7, I'm kinda using that as a reference. The operating voltage is 10.8 volts to 20 volts. So as you can see, the vast majority of the capacity of this battery is usable within that operating voltage range of the Helix, unlike the lithium ion battery that I tested, where only two thirds of the battery's capacity was in the operating range for the Helix. And as you can see, we finish up the test here with 12.07 amp hours. So great news. This guy passed the capacity tester. Now I do have a new gadget. I do have a new computerized uh, capacity tester where I can graph out the discharge curve. So check it out, do me a favor. In the comment section, let me know which test you prefer or if you want me to run both of them. So what this graph is telling us is as this battery is discharging, it's maintaining its voltage. This is typical of a lithium iron phosphate battery where you get a steady line all the way across during the discharge until the very end and then it abruptly just cuts out. That kind of throws a lot of guys off when they're new to the lithium battery game. And as you can see here, it's starting to dip off and this actually failed the capacity test um, but it was so close 11.985 so I'm, i mean I'm, I'm calling it a pass we're right there and it passed on the other test this is the point right before we dip below 10.8 volts so we're calling this the helix factor um, as you can see the vast majority of the battery is usable let's get weighed up here this guy weighs in at two pounds, 11 ounces. Now we're gonna do a quick short circuit protection test. We don't want this thing to read any current. Believe it or not, I have found some bad ones. So good, that's passed there. That's an important test for these, especially for lithium batteries. Well guys, it's time to void the warranty on this. And if you're new around here, that means we're gonna open it up and void the warranty. Before we do that, I need you to do one thing. Hit that like button the more likes we get the more people see these videos the more batteries i can buy really just supports the channel so if nothing else hit that like button let's crack her open here we go Ooh. okay first look tracker lithium 12 amp hour Oh, so right away, they're using 14 AWG wires here. I like that, a little bit thicker thicker wires than I've seen other batteries. I've seen some batteries use 18 AWG. That, there's the, the BMS in here, guys. That's not even mounted to anything. That's just floating in there. I do not like that at all. Let's get this heat shrink off. See what else we got going on here. So I took that little plastic cover off. Just see this BMS, see what we're working with. Um, I'll probably put it right back on after I get done here just so nothing shorts out. But it does have a high temperature. Uh, cutoff switch it does not have low temperature charging protection I do like it that it has a little heat sink right here I do like that they caught their balance leads I'm gonna put this back together this packet is a 
4S4P pack, meaning there's four cells in series. Each one of those series cells has four cells in parallel. So these four right here are in parallel with each other. These four here are in parallel with each other. These four and those four, four are in series. Then this, you got the same exact thing on the opposite side, and this one's in series with that one. That's how you get your 12.8 volt nominal, is four of these in series. I wish they had some fish paper going right between these cells and those cells, all the series cells. Uh, that's common, pretty common thing that I, I don't see. And when I say that, I'm just telling you guys how I would build a pack. Um, you know, in my quest for the perfect pack here. These balance leads are touching the cells and I do not like that. I'd like to see fish paper around this pack and the balance leads ran over. And the reason being is the balance leads are actually positive. Underneath the shrink wrap right here, that's negative. You already have a BMS that's floating around. So things are gonna rub and eventually, you know, potentially short out. Uh, all their their leads here are taped down so you got this negative right on top of balance leads that's positive right on top of the tin strips and then you got this BMS moving around uh, don't like that at all pull capacity but once again you know you get the true story when you when you look in this thing and this also has bathroom caulk in between these cells looks like uh, much like that Dakota Lithium 18 amp hour I did. If you haven't seen that video, it's up here. That thing was ugly. No low temperature charging protection. So overall, test looked good. Uh, got into the guts of it. And there's some, some disappointments. Just the fact that that BMS is floating around, not secure in there. It just, uh, you know, I, I need to start incorporating a shake test in these, I think see I'm, I'm gonna start doing that and you have any suggestions any other suggestions on what i should be doing with these batteries let me know in the comments below so this battery here retails for 110 bucks at cabell's or bass pro shop um one thing i did notice on the back of their their case here it seems like they just copied and pasted the back of a seal bed acid i uh, do not short circuit which most of them say that i uh, do not charge battery in a sealed container that uh, that one doesn't apply here. You can charge this in a sealed container. When you charge a sealed lead acid, that vents off a little bit of gas. Lithium doesn't, um, so there's no reason you can't do that. Uh, do not discharge below 10.5 volts under load. Again, that's a sealed lead acid uh, rule. Um, between 11.5 volts and 10.5 volts, you run the risk of damaging your battery's ability to retain a charge. We're talking sealed lead acid here. Once you get below 10.5 volts under load, you're absolutely ruining that battery. Um, so never do that with your sealed lead acid batteries. These, while well, they cut off at 10 volts. So not sure why that would be there unless other than they just copied and paste. So, and then it also says replace every three to five years. Um, so obviously that's not the case with the, these batteries. Um, Granted, unless this thing ends up shorting out, this chemistry should last you 10 years or 2,000 charge discharge cycles. And even after you get to that point, you'll still have 80% of the capacity left in this battery. Yeah, just looks like their marketing guy or what, whoever is in charge of label, labeling these things don't really doesn't really know this stuff. If you guys want to see a battery I actually did like, hit this video right here. You gonna click it? You're making it awkward. Click it. That video right here. Thanks, guys.